One to go up top, dumps it off across the middle, Fournette. What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? It is Treve from Treve Talks here for another episode of Treve Talks. What is going on, everybody? It is Treve from Treve Talks here today with Treve Talks Mock Draft 2.0, ladies and gentlemen. Just got done uh, filling out a mock draft over on fanspeak.com to give you my most realistic seven round Jacksonville Jaguar mock draft. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I got two questions for you before this video gets started. Question number one, would you be down for another live interactive mock draft either tonight or tomorrow night? Leave your opinions about that in the comment section down below. Also, would y'all be interested in a full 32 team one round mock draft as well? I need to know if you guys will be into that. Leave your opinions on that in the comment section down below. But ladies and gentlemen, today we're here to talk Jacksonville Jaguar Mock Draft 2.0. So without further ado, let us not waste any more time and hop right into the video. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Treep from Treep Talks, and this is the Jaguar 7-Round Mock Draft 2.0. Round 1, pick 7, TJ Hawkinson, tight end, Iowa. Let's discuss this. This is a, uh, you know... A lot of debate goes on on Jaguar Twitter. You're all completely for taking TJ Hawkinson at 7, but some people want to trade back and get Hawk in the later rounds because they don't think taking a tight end at 7 is worth it. Now let me talk to those people that think that we need to trade back. What if there's a, a potential opportunity where he's not going to be there? Wherever we trade back, Hawk won't be there and neither will faint. You know, neither one of them. Neither one of them are there at the pick that we trade back to get. Then what do we do then? What do we do then? You know, like that totally changes what the Jaguars are going to do in a tight end position, especially one like Hawk, who I think is a really, really tremendous player. I think that if you don't draft him when you have the opportunity to, it's not worth saying, hey, let's trade back and maybe he'll be there wherever we trade back at. No. Seven is a perfectly fine place for the Jags to draft their future tight end, and especially if it's Hawk, because I don't think he's going to last very long. I don't think he gets out of the top 15. I think that with the talent that he possesses and how good he truly is at the tight end position, you know, people comparing him to Rob Gronkowski and, you know, talking about how he might be one of the better tight ends to come out of the NFL draft in a long, long time, ladies and gentlemen. And you are still sitting here telling me the Jags shouldn't take him at seven. I completely, completely beg to differ. Now, if Dwayne Haskins is still on the board here, which he wasn't, uh, when I did this mock draft, he wasn't on the board. The Giants ended up taking him uh, one pick above us. But if Haskins is on the board, you know, that makes it a little hard uh, on Jags fans and the front office as well. Do they take Haskins because obviously he's the best player available, let him sit? Or do they try and uh, improve a position that they need to improve right now? You know, that's up for debate uh, if Haskins is still on the board in the situation. But like I said, in this situation, he wasn't on the on the board. So TJ Hawkinson, I think, is a perfect first-round pick for the Jags, and it'll be a win for the Jaguars as well. Round 2, pick 6, A.J. Brown, wide receiver, Ole Miss. I think A.J. Brown's better than D.K. Metcalf. Don't even at me. I looked at the film of both of these players. They're both tremendous, and they both played on the same team. But I would give A.J. Brown the slighter edge. His feet don't scare me. There's nothing that draws me away from A.J. Brown. The only reason that D.K. Metcalf is above him as uh, in the draft boards is because of the combine and the pure size that this guy has. You know, It's not based off of potential or true talent, at least in my opinion, because if it was, A.J. Brown would be a type of wide receiver that shouldn't even be available in the second round and you know there's still a good opportunity he might not be you know it, it all depends too we're in March 20th the draft's about a month away you know all the boards can change within a second you see that last year Baker Mayfield no one thought that that was who the Browns were going to go first overall last year but that's what they did and shocked a lot of people so AJ Brown could be another one of those guys that does find his way getting selected in the first round but as of now he's a second round projection and if the Jags can swap Hawk and Brown uh, in back-to-back -back rounds that is a win in the draft this you know my first three rounds in this draft I'm very very happy with uh, everything after that is just kind of depth and best player available but these first three rounds I'm truly truly happy with and I think that AJ Brown 
brings a lot of excitement to this Jaguar team, and I think it brings a lot of excitement to the receiver room as well. But then that brings, we got Brown in there, Lee in there, Cole in there, Chark in there, Westbrook in there, and um, Conley. Conley at six. So, you know, that kind of brings up a point where one of those guys are going to have to get cut, and like I, th I think it's going to happen. I think Keelan Cole is going to end up getting the boot. And, you know, with Keelan Cole getting cut and the addition of A.J. Brown and Conley as well, who has really good chemistry with Nick Foles, I think that this Jaguar receiver room will improve tenfold. And it'll be really fun to see, you know, guys like Westbrook, Lee, Chark, Brown, and Conley, you know, being our five wide receivers and, you know, seeing what they can offer for Nick Foles and seeing how Nick Foles can get them the ball. A.J. Brown is an exciting prospect, and I would be happy to welcome him to Jacksonville. Round three, pick five quarterback Tyree Jackson out of Buffalo. Now, if you haven't heard of Tyree Jackson or you haven't seen him play, please, please do so. I honestly think this guy is probably the most exciting quarterback in this draft uh, based on upside potential and his playing style. This guy's a big dude, six foot six, six seven. He's a bigger guy. He has a cannon, and he could also move out of the pocket as well. He led Buffalo this year to relevancy, which they haven't been in a really, really long time. But Tyree Jackson brought that excitement, and he already has the last name Jackson, so we could call him Tyree Jacksonville. And, you know, the Jags are still searching for that backup quarterback. And I think they do draft a quarterback, whether that be even later than the third round or just right around the third round. Guys that were still available as well, you had Will Greer and Daniel Jones still there in the third round but I decided to go with Tyree Jackson because I think that he has a low floor but a high ceiling and if the Jags are going to do what they you know are going to do and start Nick Foles all of 2019 you might as well draft a guy that has a pretty low floor yet a high ceiling so he can sit and learn so he can reach that high ceiling and reach that full potential which is something I think Tyree Jackson can do. Uh, you know, he's pretty raw, but when he comes into the NFL, hopefully sitting behind Nick Foles and really learning the offense and hopefully f flip stays around and nothing, you know, crazy goes on where he has to get fired so he can sit there with his three, four years that Foles will be the starter and really learn the system and come in and maybe be the next franchise quarterback for the Jags. You never know. I'm really excited about Tyree Jackson, and that would be a draft pick I'd be 100% all about for the Jaguars. Round 3, pick 34, Jaquan Johnson, safety, out of Miami. I think the Jags need to bring a safety uh, in this year, whether that be in the draft or free agency. They've yet to do it in free agency. I'd like to see them bring in a safety to compete with Jared Wilson because, you know, this is a guy who doesn't have a lot of experience starting, obviously. But, you know, when he did come in, I saw flashes that really showed his true potential and the fact that he could be a starting safety for our team. But, you know, let's bring in somebody in the later rounds, third, fourth, fifth, to give him some competition. Because maybe we just snagged the next Ronnie Harrison. That's the third round's about when we snagged Ronnie Harrison, who is, you know, going to be our starting safety, no questions asked, because, you know, he played solid in the regular season when his number was called, and, you know, was playing solid basically all year round, whether that be on the field, on the defense, or even on special teams. That guy was performing very, very well. Jaquan Johnson, he's not one of the uh, better safeties available, but bringing him in will compete, and he will compete with Jared Wilson and have an opportunity to start because, you know, Jared Wilson hasn't necessarily earned that starting safety spot. You know, he just has it right now because he's the only safety uh, on the roster uh, that plays his spot. So Jaquan Johnson coming in and challenging him for that I think would be good for Jared Wilson and as well for Johnson because maybe we'd find a diamond in the rough with Pig and Johnson in our second pick in the third round. Round four, pick seven, cornerback Chris Boyd, Texas. Another purely best player available depth pickup here. DJ Hayden still on the squad. You know, you still got uh, Boye and Ramsey, obviously. We're looking for a guy to be a depth guy because I, I believe we let Tyler Patman go. I believe I heard that, which is hard. It sucks because Tyler Patman's my guy, man. I remember during training camp, I was all about Tyler Patman. I was like, dude, this guy has stepped in in the preseason, has done well. And even in games when Ramsey or Boye, one of the two, were hurt, it was it was Boye, you know, it was hurt, he came in, he played exceptionally well, but the Jags decided to not keep him around, so they're going to need another guy like that 
on the roster. So in round four, we're going to select Chris Boyd to try and fill that option. You know, I did, when I drafted him, I did look at some things he did. Uh, his feet are a little sketchy kind of at the corner position, but I think as a raw prospect, I'm really excited to see what this guy can do and, you know, where he goes, even if he doesn't go into Jacksonville. Um, because I think that he has potential to be a really good corner, but like I said, he's just so raw, you don't really know uh, how good he's going to do exactly. So, But Chris Boyd would be a good depth pick at the, at the uh, round four spot at where the Jaguars pick to come in for either an injured Hayden, Boye, Ramsey, etc. Round six, pick five, Miles Gaskin, running back. I cannot believe how low Miles Gaskin is on these people's big boards and draft boards. This guy is totally one of the best running backs in the NFL draft, in my opinion. I think wherever he goes, he's going to shine, and I really, really hope the Jaguars try and pair him with um, Leonard Fournette and see what he can do uh, with this offense. I think he has tremendous upside. I don't understand, like I said, why he's so low on big boards. You know, he's talented. He's he has everything figured out. He has good feet. He's fast. He's reliable. He doesn't get hurt much. You know, all of that, man. He has all the good intangibles a running back is supposed to have, yet he is so low on the draft boards. Whether that is because the running back class this year just isn't that great or a real knock on Gaskin as, you know, as the analysts are actually knocking on Gaskin saying, oh, he's not that great, or whether it be because there's a lot of running backs in this draft that aren't that great. So, you know, that's that's... You know, one or the other is the reason why Gaskin is so low on these big boards. And, you know, he has four over 1,000 yards with Washington, whether that be rushing yards or all-purpose. And he just, he was the face of the Washington offense for four years with uh, Jake Browning. You know, both of those guys carried Washington to, at you know, at most, I think they were number two in the nation at one point. Like, this offense was ran through Miles Gaskin. And I think the Jaguars should bring him in, and he could be a great change of pace back from Leonard Fournette. I expect the Jaguars to draft a running back probably in the later rounds, like the sixth round. And if we're going to do that, I think we need to draft Miles Gaskin. And to close things out, round 7, pick 22, Cameron Smith, USC. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about this one. This one was basically based on a bit of team nades and the best player available. And Cameron Smith, the linebacker out of USC, just happened to be the best player available and uh, a position of need a little bit for the Jags at the linebacker position. So, you know, not a lot of thought went into that pick. I was just like, oh, best available. As you would imagine, a seventh-round draft pick would be so... Like I said, don't read too much into that seventh round pick. You know, everything else from one to f one to six, you know, you could really consider that I have a lot of opinion on, have a lot of thought on. But when it came to round seven, I just picked the best available player out of position of need, and that was at the time Cameron Smith, the linebacker out of USC. And that was my Jaguars seven round mock draft 2.0. What did you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you can check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Troop Talks or follow me on Instagram at Trey Von Pixley. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody outworking me. It's simply just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great day.